Hi everyone, this is Kalyan Kumar this side and welcome back to Chemistry Universe. This is part 2 and the last part of alcohols. And in this we are going to discuss the physical and chemical properties of alcohols. So we, without wasting time, let's get on with the video. Alright, so here we go, physical and chemical properties. So the first one that we are going to talk about is the physical properties. Now. C1 to C11 are colorless liquids and the higher alcohols are solids. As we know that uh, as the number of carbons increase, the van der Waals forces increase and that would make the alcohols go into more condensed state. Uh, it is seen that the density of monohydric alcohol is less than that of water. So all the monohydric alcohols, the ones with single OH, they are all lighter than water. Uh, but they are not going to float in water as they are soluble in water. So, when you have an alcohol which is uh, soluble in water, will it, it will definitely not be forming a layer. But there are alcohols, in fact most of them don't uh, dissolve in water and they will definitely float in water uh, forming a layer above the water layer. So, now Density is uh, directly related to molecular weight for monohydric alcohols. Now C1 to C3 and tertiary butyl alcohol are soluble in water due to H bonding. Now here you have to understand that C1, that means methanol, ethanol and propanol and tertiary butanol, they are soluble in water. Others are not. So let's understand why. And as it is mentioned, it is due to hydrogen bonding. But then one might wonder why not hydrogen bonding in the others have, as they all have OH. Well, you see what happens is in an alcohol, the OH part is polar. Whereas the hydrocarbon part is the non-polar part. So Generally, we call the polar part as hydrophilic because it has got similar attractive forces like water, which is a polar medium. So OH is called a hydrophilic, attracts water and the hydrocarbon part is the hydrophobic end which repels water in the sense that the uh, hydrocarbon part would have van der Waals forces. Water cannot form van der Waals forces or its van der Waals forces are going to be extremely weak. So what happens is higher the hydrocarbon part, lower will be the solubility of alcohol in water. So OH tries to make it soluble, the hydrocarbon tries to make it insoluble. And as the hydrocarbon chain increases, the solubility will decrease. And therefore, it is important to understand that the first three alcohols, including tertiary butanol, are soluble in water. Now you will ask me, why tertiary butanol? Well, tertiary butanol is soluble in water because its hydrophobic end, the hydrocarbon part, is so highly branched. Therefore, its surface area is extremely low and Van der Waals forces form only when the surface area is high. Here the surface area is low, so the hydrophobic part is not that much uh, attracting using Van der Waals forces. There isn't a good hydrophobic part here. The hydrophobic part is almost spherical in size and therefore it doesn't do much of a damage in terms of solubility. So here the hydrophilic ends. But if, the, if you take butanol, that would be insoluble in water because there the chain is linear and therefore there will be more surface area. It wants Van der Waals forces which don't exist. And therefore you will find that third butanol of all the butanols is soluble in water, others are not. Okay. So solubility is directly related to branching that is for isomeric alcohols. Remember we are only talking about isomeric alcohols here. Inversely related to molecular mass because higher the hydrophobic end, more will be the molecular mass and lesser will be the solubility. And obviously solubility will increase with the number of hydroxyl groups present in the molecule. So some examples would be butanol. We are talking about uh, normal butanol here. Then uh, C5 alcohol, C6. And uh, so if you were to ask to predict the solubility in water, what do you think would be the order? Pause the video now and try to make your order and then play the video back. And here is the answer. Obviously, the uh, 
hydrophobic end is lowest in one, higher in two, and highest in three out of the uh, three. Therefore, the order would be this. All right, let's go over one more. This one, this one, and this one. One, two, three. So, what do you think uh, would be the order? We already said tertiary butanol is soluble in water because more the branching. uh more will be the solubility so 3 will be more than 2 and 2 will be more than 1 all right if you look at these three what do you think pause the video make your uh, order as i said more the oh groups more hydroxyl groups more would be the polar part more will be the solubility this is the order now boiling point is almost reverse of uh, solubility because boiling point is directly dependent on molecular mass remember boiling point and solubility are different solubility is in water whereas boiling point is for the pure compound so if all molecules are similar then higher the molecular mass more will be the hydrocarbon part and more will be the van der waals forces and therefore uh, you will find that boiling point as it is the case with all types of organic comp compounds it is directly related to molecular mass and for the same reason inversely related to branching because branching leads to less van der waals forces but it is directly related to number of hydroxyl groups because now the alcohols also can form hydrogen bonding with each other so if i were to give you the same three and ask you to arrange them in boiling point order solubility was 1 2 3 what do you think will be the boiling point order pause the video here is the answer 3 2 1 more the molecular mass what do you think will happen to this one same three molecules i'm giving again this time we want boiling point so obviously more branching would lead to less boiling point and what about this one now remember again pause the video now and here is the answer more the hydroxyl group more will be the hydrogen bonding to one and lastly i want you to figure out boiling point of these three they are not alcohols one of them is so pause the video now make your order play the video back again now obviously one alcohol will show intramolecular uh, sorry intermolecular hydrogen bonding this is not going to show any hydrogen bonding because the h is not attached to oxygen remember h attached to carbon is not going to show hydrogen bonding this is going to show more hydrogen bonding because this can also form hydrogen bond and this o can also form hydrogen bond so the h of one could form a hydrogen bond with the o of the other this h can even form hydrogen bond with this o so one molecule itself will be joined by several hydrogen bonds and therefore the boiling point will be the greatest among these for carboxylic acids so that would be 312 now let's look at chemical properties again some of the properties are simple some of them we have done some of them we are going to do so first is reaction with sodium now reaction with sodium depends on the acidic nature of alcohol in fact this shows the acidic nature of alcohol because whenever you dissolve sodium and you have an acidic h uh, the sodium will oxidize it will reduce the h plus and you get bubbles of hydrogen gas now i want you to tell me what is the order of acidic nature among water alcohol acetylene and ammonia i want to pause the video now and i want you to find out which is more acidic which is less acidic the acidic order here is the answer now in the case of roh and water obviously these two will be more than these two simply because o is more electronegative more negative electro uh, uh, more electronegative element having an h will be more acidic now here there is a plus i effect of r while this does not have any of that so plus i effect will always decrease acidic strength so water will be more acidic than alcohol now out of alcohol and acetylene and ammonia if you want to figure out these two now if you remember i have taught you in uh, goc 
that an sp carbon is more electronegative than an sp3 nitrogen now as such we say carbon is more electronegative uh, nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon but we also know that electronegativity depends on the hybridization so sp hybridized carbon is more electronegative than the sp3 hybridized nitrogen and therefore this will be more acidic so obviously the order is going to be this so this is the acidic strength order now why am i saying this because this sodium is going to remove an acidic edge and you will and this does have an acidic edge and therefore what it will do is it will take the h plus uh, the na will get oxidized and the h plus will get reduced now alcohols are less acidic than water and new and neutral with litmus paper and give h2 with active metals like sodium and potassium now you have to understand this that uh, uh, i mean acidic does not necessarily mean it has to react to the litmus paper i mean of course you call something as an acid only when it reacts to the litmus paper but the point is we are looking at acidic h we are not looking at whether it is going to behave as an acid or not because water is neutral and water is more acidic than roh so in some sense maybe roh becomes more basic in that sense but the fact of the matter is we are not looking at acidic or basic strength we are saying does it have an active h active h meaning an h that can go as h plus and if it does have then active metals like sodium and potassium especially the alkali metals you know they are, have a high tendency to get oxidized they are the ones which will release hydrogen gas from even an alcohol so what happens to the alcohol it becomes alkoxide sodium alkoxide and hydrogen gas now the second uh, reaction is the reaction with carbon disulfide a very simple reaction the first part is the same so re first you react the alcohol with sodium then you react the product of this with ch2 now i want you to yourself make the product pause the video now here is the answer obviously o minus is nucleophilic and carbon here is electrophilic because remember sulfur is more electronegative than carbon so o will attack the c and the pi bond will shift to s what do you get you get the sodium salt and this is called sodium alkyl xanthate and it is also called a floating agent floating agent because this is used in metallurgy to purify the uh, ore that you use for extracting metals because it has got several impurities there and many of them uh, you would want to separate out even before you do the extraction and uh, so what you do is you use a floating agent that helps aggregate these impurities and make them float above Uh, the water surface so you can easily decant it and uh, purify the ore to some extent all right the next is alkylation now al roh will react with uh, ch2n2 that's called a methyl azide and you get an ether but this ether is a special ether you can't get any ether you you get a ether with a ch3 there and nitrogen gas and the mechanism is pretty simple now this is one of the resonating structures of the methyl azide or i can draw one more resonating structure which is this one and i'm going to use the second one to show the reaction remember it does not really matter which resonating structure you use we we'll always use the one which is easy for us to understand now remember the alcohol has an acidic edge right and this has A C minus. C minus is a very good base, and this has some kind of an acidic edge. So, what do you think will happen? First, they they meet each other. What do you think will happen? The H plus will transfer to the CH two minus, and that will form alkoxide and this. But then you also know this is a good leaving group, and this guy is a good nucleophile. So, what do you think will happen next? The O minus attacks the carbon, and nitrogen leaves. now of course there is another way of making uh, ether and that is you take alcohol react it with sodium to form sodium alkoxide then react it with a primary alkyl halide it has to be a primary because tertiary can undergo uh, elimination 
so there will be a nucleophilic substitution and you will get an ether and this is what we call as the williamson's synthesis now let's talk about acylation now in acylation alcohol now before i even begin acylation let me explain something to you you see there are four derivatives of acids that we generally talk about acid chloride you have acid anhydride you have ester and you have amide you have acid chloride you have anhydride you have ester you have amide now i have written them in this order for a specific reason and let me explain to you what is that reason what happens is if i were to put carboxylate ion here what do you think will happen i have a acid chloride i have a carboxylate ion well let me tell you one thing is for sure that the o minus this o minus is going to react attack this c because it's highly electrophilic so and the pi bond will move up so you will get r c o negative cl and you will get the carboxylate part here now this o minus has a strong plus i effect it's going to push now if it if, if there is no leaving group on carbon i mean its pushing is not going to help so it will stay there that would be called nucleophilic addition but o minus can push and if there is a good leaving group then that leaving group will leave and if that group is different from the nucleophile we call it nucleophilic substitution you need to figure out whether carboxylate will leave or cl minus will leave because they are electronegative elements and they can leave with uh, uh, minus charge so what do you think will happen so you need to figure out which is a better leaving group cl minus or carboxylate ion and we know that a strong base a good base is a good nucleophile and a weak base is a good leaving group so which is a weak base cl minus or carboxylate so the problem would be that in carboxylate you know the atom is different but there is a resonance in cl minus there is no resonance but the atom is big enough so are we going to say carboxylate is more or cl minus is a better leaving group if you can't figure this out there's a very simple way of doing that convert them into a conjugate acid so you have a carboxylic acid and you have hcl what do you think will happen now which is more acidic obviously hcl and you know that a stronger acid has a weaker conjugate base and a weaker acid has a stronger conjugate base so when it comes to basic strength carboxylate is stronger if carboxylate is stronger it is also a better nucleophile which means this is a good leaving group so what will happen is the o minus will come and the cl will go so what will i get i'll get the anhydride because cl is gone now o c o r is attached to c double bond o so this is the nucleophilic substitution that is happening here now suppose on an anhydride i add alkoxide now let's use the same logic so this and this again will attack here this will go up you will get rco negative and you have this uh, or prime and this is ocor now this is going to come back what do you think will leave so either alkoxide leave or carboxylate leave which will leave the one which is weaker base now here you can very easily see this is a much better leaving group because the minus is resonance stabilized here the minus is localized and therefore this will be a stronger nucleophile this will be a stronger leaving group So what will happen? This will go. If this goes, what do you get? You get this. So on an anhydride, if I put alkoxide, I'll get ester. But can you also see that this anhydride I got from acid chloride by putting this? Meaning this was a better leaving group than this, which is why I got this conversion. And this is a better leaving group than. this one which is why i got this conversion 
So obviously this is a much better leaving group than this. Isn't it? If Cl is a better leaving group than carboxylate. I mean if I were to write leaving group Cl minus is better than carboxylate. And carboxylate is better than alkoxide in a leaving group ability. Obviously this can not only replace this, can replace this also. So even in an acid chloride, if I want to put, uh, make ester, I will simply use an alkoxide ion. At the same time, now if I were to put amide ion in this, so amide will attack the carbon. Now out of amide and alkoxide, this is a better leaving group. This is a better nucleophile. Reason? Reason is simple. Remember I told you in, 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 in the new, uh, while doing nucleophilicity that in a period when you go from left to right, nucleophilicity decreases and O is on the right of N. So this, has, is, this is less nucleophilic than this, therefore a better leaving group. So NH2 minus is the worst of all the leaving group, which means if I convert, if I put this uh, NH2 minus here, I'm going to get this one. Which means if I put NH2 minus in any of the above, they will also give me this. So anything on top can give me anything at the bottom. The converse is not true. Okay. Now, why am I talking about this? Because the next is acylation and what we have is we have an alcohol and we have an acid chloride. Think of an alcohol like the alkoxide. Obviously, alkoxide will replace the Cl. So what do you think I'll get? I'll get an ester. Now, if the R prime is very specific and I, let's say that is a CH3, then the reaction, you'll get this product. We call this reaction as acetylation. This is an acetyl group. So this is called acetylation. Now let's say for example, I have phenol. Now phenol has both the acid and the alcohol part. Even though it's not an alcohol, it's a phenol part, but it's similar. Now this is uh, going to react with, let's just say, CH3COCl. Now this is going to give you a product. What? I want you to pause and think. Obviously, it is the alcohol part which will react. The O will substitute the Cl. I'll get this. Right? This O comes and the Cl leaves. So the O is attached, this O is attached to the C and then it loses the H. Now this particular compound, the, the, uh, uh, this one is called salicylic acid. Whereas the product, which is actually a very important product, this is a very important product. This is called, it has called several names. We can call it acetoxybenzoic acid. We can call it acetyl salicylic acid or commonly it's called aspirin. And this is the same chemical compound that is found in aspirin tablets uh, meant for headaches. Now, if I were to take an alcohol and I take another specific R, which is pH, I'll get the same product, but the name of the reaction becomes the scotton bowman reaction. So I have the alcohol, it's the same reaction, acylation, and I take benzoyl chloride, the R prime COCl is pH here, and I'm going to get this ester. That's called the scotton bowman reaction. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about esterification in general. Now this is directly from alcohol and acid. So we have carboxylic acid, we have alcohol, and it will form an ester under acidic conditions and the reaction is reversible. And I'll get ester and water. The reverse is called hydrolysis of ester under acidic medium. And the mechanism goes like this. Because we need to understand where does this O come from? The ester O. Are we going to think that the, this H goes and this OH goes? Or is this OH going and this H going? Now, normally one would think that this is more acidic. So this H will go and this OH will go. Well, actually it is the other way around. 
दिस विल लूज दी एच एंड दिस विल लूज द ओ एच मीनिंग दी दिस काइंड ऑफ ओ द ईथर लिंकेज ओ इन एस्टर कम्स फ्रॉम द एल्कोहल सो द मैकेनिज्म गोज लाइक दिस यू हैव द लोन पेर ऑन ओ दिस टेक्स दी एच प्लस एंड गोज लाइक दिस एंड देन देर इज द एल्कोहल विद लोन पेयर अटैकिंग द इलेक्ट्रोफिलिक कार्बन दिस गोज हि and we are going to get the protonated one then you have uh, intramolecular proton exchange so this h goes to one of the oh remember they will keep migrating but once it reaches the one of the oh another thing that can happen is it can leave as water which means you will get a carbocation which is going to be resonance stabilized and uh, so this will lose an h plus and you will get the ester and if you notice the o that came in the ether o this o is coming from the alcohol not from the acid and the reason i want to make that sure is because when you have an acid and alcohol and the alcohol has o18 the ester will have the o18 on the or prime while water will not have the o18 because water forms with one of the oh either this or this because remember these are becoming this so this oh is already there this also this o is also becoming an oh now that leads to another question suppose i have an alcohol with o18 here or maybe this is o18 it doesn't matter and i have an al uh, this is the acid and the alcohol does not have o18 so they will ask you what is the water like does it have o18 or not now if this oh were to go remember as water then the water will not have o18 but even this could have gone even this can go so the answer could be both the normal h2o as well as h2o with o18 unless and until both are o18 then in that case you will only get this but if one of them is o18 the water may have or may not have now it seems that the rate of esterification is inversely related to steric hindrance of both alcohol and acid so both the alcohol and acid would have to have least steric hindrance to have high reactivity so predict the reactivity of alcohol if the same acid is used so between these alcohols can you tell me what is the order of reactivity i think you can very easily do that inversely related to steric hindrance and what happens to the reactivity of acid if alcohol is same between these can you see again you will have to simply look for steric hindrance and one is least hindered the next is transesterification the reaction of alcohol now this is weird the it is a conversion of one ester into another that means i have an ester and then i have an alcohol and if i put concentrated sulfuric acid i'll get the ester of the other alcohol and the other ester the the uh, the, uh, the alcohol which had formed the earlier ester would become the alcohol now one may wonder shouldn't this reaction be reversible because if this guy can replace this guy why can't this replace this well yeah it is possible but we always make it unidirectional and that is because this is only possible or done when this alcohol has lower boiling point than this one this is higher boiling point only then this can happen why let's say for example its boiling point is 60 degrees celsius and this guy's boiling point is 50 degrees celsius i'll keep the reaction temperature at 55 degrees celsius so this is not going to boil so this will remain as liquid but this whose boiling point is 50 if the reaction is 55 then obviously this will not form as liquid it will only form as vapor so if it forms a vapor it can easily escape so the reverse reaction won't happen and if you were able to condense it somewhere using distillation techniques you will be able to get it separately so the reaction will not be in equilibrium so remember 
This happens when the product alcohol has lower boiling point than the reactant 1 and the temperature is kept in between the boiling point of the two alcohols. Now, I am going to give you a couple of examples of esterification, not a necessarily trans esterification. I want you to pause this video after this. Now you pause the video, make the product and tell me what happens. Now let's get the answer. So the way you do it is, you have oxalic acid. So there are two COH groups and there are two alcohol groups. Okay. So I have the OH, CH2, CH2, OH. Remember, this becomes water. It will happen on both sides. So, don't you think this carbon is now going to be joined with this oxygen? This carbon will be joined with this oxygen to form an ester. And it is forming a diester. So, this will look like this. It's a six membered ring, which is why it is forming. Okay, try this. Pause the video. As you can see, intramolecular esterification, H leaves, OH leaves, this O connects with this oxygen. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, and the O is 5. It's a five membered ring. And cyclic esters are called lactones. And this is alpha carbon, this is beta carbon, this is gamma carbon. It's called a gamma lactone. We'll do more of this when we do acid derivatives. Next is reaction with carbonyl compound. Now in reaction with carbonyl compounds, you have a let's say an aldehyde and you use two equivalents of alcohol and you put dry HCl. What will happen is you will get geminal diether. From an aldehyde, if it is formed, it is called acetyl. If you use a ketone instead, this product is called a ketal. And the important thing about this is that this acetyl can be reconverted to the aldehyde by acidic hydrolysis. Because remember, ethers are highly sensitive towards acid. And the way this happens is like this. You know, you have the aldehyde. Dry HCl we use only because we don't want much of H+. Otherwise, acetyl won't form. If it has a lot of H+, it will go back to the aldehyde. So, dry HCl takes, gives you a little bit of H+. This picks up the H+. You get this. Now, this has a resonating structure looking like this. Now, we have an alcohol attacking this carbon. Which means you will get this. Now, this can lose an H+. And form this. Or it could show MP, intramolecular proton exchange. It can go here. Even this can lose H+, giving you this. Now, this is called hemiacetyl. Hemiacetyl. So, what is a hemiacetyl? Hemiacetyl is that in which there is a carbon having an OH as well as an ether. If it has two ethers, geminal, acetyl. One OH and one OR, hemiacetyl. Now, hemiacetyls are generally unstable. So, what would happen is, if I were to show the reaction from the previous molecule, it will lose water from this. Or you can just say that, uh, you know, uh, the uh, H sort of comes from outside and uh, I mean, H plus comes from outside. Or maybe you can just start it from here and it will form this carbocation. And uh, you will know that uh, alcohol will act and then lose the H plus and therefore dry seal is only a catalyst and you get acetyl. Now this reaction is very useful because ethers are highly non-reactive. They are inert. So if I have a compound, say for example, let me ask you this question. Suppose I have an ester and a ketone in the same compound. I want only the ketone to be reduced to alcohol. But I don't want the ester to be reduced to an alcohol. What do you think I will use? Pause. Think. And here is the answer. As I had told you in the previous video, that 
ketones can be reduced to alcohol but esters won't be if i use nabh4 all right second question suppose i want both of them to become alcohol i want the ketone to become alcohol i want the ester to become primary alcohol what do you think i will use pause the video now think and here is the answer pretty simple use lah because lah can reduce both ketone and ester but tell me is there a way that i don't reduce the ketone but reduce the ester and the answer is there is no such reagent that can do this so what we have to do is we have to follow a sequence of steps so what you first do is you convert this into a ketal you put two molecules of alcohol or you can even use a diol you know you can use ethylene glycol and if you were to use that this will become a ring type ketal whereas it will not form in ester ketals and acetals are only formed in aldehydes and ketones now the ketone has been protected by forming a ketal now you use lah the ester will be reduced so what you will get is you will get something like this the ester will become ch2oh and now we know that if i use h3o plus my ketal or acetal will break down and go back to being an aldehyde or a ketone and that's what happened sorry this is ch2oh so i got ester reduced without reducing the ketone but not directly i had to go through a sequence of steps all right now the next reaction of alcohol we've already done is reaction with gr the grignard's reagent you have the alcohol you have the gr and uh, you know that uh, anything with an acidic h uh, r prime the, the gr will take up an h and form the uh, hydrocarbon so it will form r o minus mgx plus and you will get alkene then comes reaction with ketene now you have the alcohol and you have a ketene now here what happens is the product is an ester and let's see how this happens you have the alcohol you have the ketene the lone pair will attack the carbon pi bond shift to o you will get this there's a intramolecular proton exchange the h will go to o and you will get this can you see this part is a enol in all and what does enols do tautomerize so what do you think that will have do it will convert this into an ester the next is the reaction with isocyanic acid now this is very similar to the previous one instead of using a ketene we use what is known as the imine uh, the nh double bond c and uh, you will get this same mechanism as the previous one this alcohol reacts with this the lone pair attacks the carbon i think i have not shown this arrow so this arrow is there and the pi bond shifts to o you get this you get mp again it will show tautomerism because it is imenol and you'll get this amide it's a amide as well as an ester so the next is reaction with epoxide or oxyranes and you know what happens here right you you even can answer without h plus and with h plus with h plus obviously o will get protonated again can you see sn2 with sn1 character and then it loses the h plus you will get this the next one is reaction with hx now you have the alcohol you have hx and it will simply give you rx in water remember we did lucas test we did it in alkyl halides and uh, we know that uh, uh, this goes via sn1 because uh, i mean the tertiary will go by sn1 it will be faster primary goes by sn2 which is why we did lucas test so the reactivity of alcohols would be in this order more stable the carbocation 
and as far as the hx is concerned hi hbr hcl hx and this is where we had done the lucas test we had also done this one reaction of phosphorus halides remember alcohols were used to form alkyl halides using pcl3 this is the same reaction and we could even do it pcl5 and we got pocl3 we also did the, with this one remember reaction with thionyl chloride socl2 with pyridine and without pyridine with pyridine it was sn2 and without pyridine it was sni then comes reaction with ammonia so you have an alcohol reacting with ammonia in the presence of al2o3 al2o3 is a dehydrating agent so what do you think i'll get you have to dehydrate so you have to remove the oh and h of n which means you will get an amine a primary amine the next is dehydration so i have an alcohol ethanol and i use concentrated sulfuric acid you can use al2o3 also but let's see both of them now the product depends on the temperature and here you have to learn the temperature if it is done at zero you will get dimethyl sulfate if it is done at 100 you will get methyl hydrogen sulfate uh, sorry ethyl hydrogen sulfate if you do the reaction at uh, 140 it will dehydrate uh, it will uh, dehydrate intermolecularly to give ether how does it do one of them is protonated the other is not so the other will act as a nucleophile remove water from here and then release this h won't i get this this is called intermolecular dehydration but at 170 it will do intramolecular dehydration it will lose oh as well as h from the same molecule obviously it gives you alkene a similar reaction can be done with al2o3 which is also a dehydrating agent alumina but here the temperatures are different 250 you will get ether and at 350 you will get alkene and the ease of dehydration is greater for tertiary and second thing in primary that we know because uh, you know you generally get carbocations in this then we have catalytic dehydrogenation now in catalytic dehydrogenation you have you can use copper at 300 degrees celsius it will dehydrogenate meaning it will take one h it will take one h from here and one h from here and form a double bond uh, a pi bond between carbon and o don't you think i'll get this just remove one h one h i'll get this it is called dehydrogenation this is the reverse of hydrogenation if i do it with secondary alcohol i'm sure to get a ketone but with a tertiary alcohol i cannot do do hydrogenation so it will do dehydration it will form alkene and this can be used to find the nature of the alcohol because there is a test for aldehyde and there is a test for alkene there is no particular test for ketone as such so aldehydes can be tested so the product gives you the aldehyde test well it's a primary alcohol if the product gives an alkene test remember bro, bro, uh, bromine in cecil for or the base reagent so if this test for an alkene positive alkene it means it's a tertiary alcohol and if it doesn't do either it's a secondary alcohol then comes a very important reaction that is oxidation even though these were also oxidation but these are proper oxidation that we are going to talk about and there are two types of oxidizing agents we'll talk about mild and strong by mild or controlled oxidizing agent primary alcohols are oxidized to aldehydes while secondary are oxidized to ketones so what happens is if you take a primary alcohol you get a aldehyde secondary alcohol you will get a ketone if you use mild now i'll explain what is controlled so the mild oxidizing agents you have to remember the list of these you have nbs you have fentens reagent you have the sarex or the collins reagent which is pcc you have pdc or pyridinium dichromate or ctp which is chromium trioxide 
pyridine you have manganese dioxide mno2 then you have ceric ammonium nitrate you have aluminium tertiary butoxide and as usual the the one that we just did copper at 300 or silver at 300 now mild oxidizing agent this is alcohol this is mild and i get aldehyde now remember in if i were to use strong strong will further convert this into acid okay but let us say you want to stop here you want to use strong but you want to stop here well why would you do that that's up to you but you want to use strong and you want to stop here well this shows hydrogen bonding this doesn't if you remember we looked at the boiling point remember so which means if this boils at 60 and this boils at 50 i'll keep the reaction at 55 so this will remain in liquid this will automatically form into a vapor it won't remain in the solution so the aldehyde will not be in the solution it can't be oxidized further it can be distillated out and thereby i'll get aldehyde that is called controlled oxidation so secondary alcohol with mild will give you ketone tertiary mild nothing and mild oxidizing agents won't even uh, oxidize carbon double bond carbon so what do you think will happen to this pause the video obviously secondary alcohol becomes ketone double bond remains intact and remember these oxidizing reagents do not affect other functional groups now mno2 one of the mild ones will only oxidize allyl and benzyl alcohols if the allyl and benzyl alcohols are primary aldehyde If they are secondary ketone, but only allyl and benzyl. Now let's look at the strong ones. These are the ones we will convert them into acid. Acidic K minus four, alkaline K minus four, acidic dichromate, concentrated nitric acid. This is H two Cr two O seven. You have Jones reagent, Cr O three with sulfuric acid. So primary alcohols with strong will become acid. But remember, if the medium is alkaline. you won't get an acid you'll get a acid ion so make sure you know what the medium is and make the product accordingly the secondary ones will become ketone ketones can't be further oxidized easily and the but if you really want to do oxidation of ketones you have to do vigorous condition then it will become a mixture of carboxylic acid now this reaction is of actually no practical use but some people tend to you know do it and therefore it can be done under vigorous conditions now tertiary alcohols with strong will not give you anything they won't be oxidized but use vigorous again you'll get a mixture of carboxylic acid and i'll show you how this happens ketones are oxidized to a mixture of carboxylic acids by following a rule called popov's rule now what popov's rule does is that it says during the vigorous oxidation of ketones by strong oxidizing agents the bond between the carbonyl carbon and an alkyl group breaks so what happens is you have r co let's say you have a ch2 ch ch3 ch2 co ch3 now one of these bonds will break either this or this and the rule says the carbonyl carbon goes with that alkyl group that has smaller number of carbon atoms that means this carbonyl carbon would prefer to stay with this less number of carbon atoms so this bond breaks if this bond breaks with k mn4 this will become an acid acidic acid this will also become an acidic acid and with k mn4 the simple logic is break the bond and give 1 1 oh to each and if the carbons have h break them also so if this were the compound and if you were to do strong under vigorous this bond breaks and you get a mixture of acetic acid now the reason why this happens of course it's not required but i'm just going to tell you is because this changes to the enol form you know this happens because it shows this now the reason it is vigorous required is because only under vigorous conditions you will get a substantial amount of enol under normal conditions enol is going to be extremely less now enol has a carbon double bond carbon can you see this will break and therefore you will get acid this is just like an alkene 
So this is not a CH2, it's a CH by the way. So for each bond breakage, you will get 1, 1 OH. So this will get two more OH, totally three OH acetic acid. This will get two OH and one OH due to the H and you'll get acetic acid. With tertiary alcohols, what happens is one of the bonds will break carbon, carbon, and I mean, it will first become an alkene. It will dehydrate and then this bond will break. So in this case, you will get acetone as well as CO2 and acetone, as you see under vigorous condition will further give you acetic acid and CO2. The same logic as applied earlier. Now, Jones reagent is, is, is a little uh, uh, important to understand that, see, the strong ones will oxidize both the carbon-carbon double bond as well as alcohol, primary and secondary. But Jones reagent is a very specific uh, strong oxidizing agent that does not oxidize carbon double bond carbon or carbon triple bond carbon. Other strong oxidizing agents do, this one doesn't. So, Jones reagent only oxidizes the alcohol part and not the alkene part. So, suppose I were to have this and I were to use Jones reagent, it will only oxidize the primary alcohol into uh, acid. Double bond is not touched. So, if I take a secondary alcohol, well, it will form it into a ketone. Now, allyl alcohols are oxidized to aldehyde at room temperature. So, Jones reagent has another unique thing. When it comes to allyl alcohol, and if it is primary, it will only oxidize it to aldehyde at room temperature. Only at high temperature will the aldehyde become an acid. So if you were to do this reaction at high temperature, then it will become an acid. And the reagent that actually oxidizes in Jones reagent is chromic acid or dichromic acid. So let's do a couple of examples. You have this with PCC. Pause the video. Here is the answer. PCC mild ketone. What happens with PDC? Pause. Here is the answer. Again a ketone. What about MnO2? This is also mild. Pause. No reaction because it's only for allyl and benzyl alcohol. Remember? Alright. What about Jones reagent? Already done this. Pause. Ketone. What about KMnO4 or dichromate? Pause. Now they will oxidize not only the ketone to the, the secondary alcohol to ketone, they will also break this carbon double bond carbon and convert both these carbons into COOH because they have H there. If you want, you can do it slowly on your own. If I'm going a little too fast. So what do you think will happen? PCC, PDC. Pause the video. Tertiary alcohols can't be oxidized even by strong ones. So here, of course, it won't do. It will only do the uh, primary and primary to that too, to aldehyde. What do you think MnO2 will do? No reaction. Jones reagent. Well, acid. If the temperature is not given, just make it into acid. What about KMnO4 and dichromate? Same thing. They are not going to touch tertiary under it, un unless and until it is vigorous. What do you think will happen to this one with PCC or PDC? Pause. Well, secondary alcohol to ketone, primary to aldehyde, not touch the carbon double bond carbon, you will get this. What do you think will happen with MnO2? Pause. Here is the answer. Well, it will only oxidize the allyl alcohol. What do you think will happen with this guy? So, lot of things are going to happen. The primary alcohol will become acid. Secondary will become ketone. Then it will break it here. This will become acid. This will become ketone. So I'll get acetone and I'll get this one. Pause the video if you can't understand this. Just take your time in understanding this. 
All right, the next is oxidation by HIF4. Now, HIF4 is a very special oxidizing agent, even though we are going to talk more about uh, all types of oxidizing agent. HIF4 is not going to oxidize alcohol. It will oxidize vicinal diols. And not just them. It will oxidize vicinal diols. It will oxidize vicinal ketools. It will uh, do the oxidation of vicinal diketones. It will do the oxidation of amino oils or amino ketones. So it's going to oxidize only the vicinal ones and that too either having OH or NH2 or C double bond. So when diols react with HIF4, it's called per iodic acid. It's not called periodic acid. It's per iodic acid. These diols or polyols in which OH group is attached to vicinal carbon atoms after reaction with HIF4 can form aldehyde, ketone and carboxylic acid. This reaction is used in identification of the number of OH groups in a polyol. Now, in place of HIF4, we can also use NiO4, Ki4 and let tetraacetate. Now, how do we test? Since it is said as it, that it is like a test, it must show some color or something. Now, substrate can be vicinal diols, polyols, vicinal keto, ketool, Vicinal diketone, vicinal amino oil, vicinal ketoamine. And the product of the reaction is made by breaking the carbon carbon bond and adding one OH group for each bond cleavage. So, this is the simple logic you have to do. Whenever you have a carbon carbon bond having two OH on, on them, break that bond and give one OH to each. For each bond cleavage, one mole of HIF4 is consumed. Now, the way this happens is, uh, the way it is used as a test is that HIF4 forms HIO3 because it will oxidize the other one itself get reduced. If you were to add AgNO3 now or AgNO3 was previously present, it will react with AgIO3. Uh, it will react with HIO3. AgNO3 will give AgIO3, which is a white precipitate. So HIF4 reacts to form HIO3, which produces a white PPT with AgNO3, forming AgIO3. So when a mixture of HIF4 Substrate and AgNO3 are mixed. The formation of a white PPT confirms the presence of any of the substrates listed earlier. Now, lead tetraacetate reacts and oxidizes the other, itself gets reduced to Pb2, which produces a black PPT when reacted with H2S. So, what I want you to do is I'll give you reactions, make sure you pause the video, you make them, and then see the video. Pause. What do you think will happen? It will break the carbon carbon bond. Add one OH to each. Don't you get acetaldehyde? It's not going to break the CH bond, by the way. Only the CC bond. So what do you think happens here? Pause the video. And this is the answer. The right side will become acetaldehyde. Left side will become acetone. What do you think will happen here? So you get the cleavage here. You get the cleavage here. Acetaldehyde, acetaldehyde, and what do you think will happen to this? It will get two more OH, it will give you formic acid. Well, what about this one? Pause. Here is the answer. Break this, give 1-1 one, one OH, left will become acetic acid, right will become acetaldehyde. Okay. What do you think will happen this one? It will break this bond and you will get two acetic acid. What do you think will happen to this one? Pause. Here is the answer. It will break this. It will break this. This will become acetic acid. This will have two OH on it. So it will become formic acid and this will form acetaldehyde. So acetaldehyde. Formic acid and acetic acid. What do you think here? Pause. Here is the answer. So break this, break this. You get two acetic acid and one formic acid. I have not listed the formic acid, but you can write that. What will happen here? Pause now. Well, it breaks here. It breaks here. 
acetic acid this is acetaldehyde this is acetaldehyde what do you think will happen to this it will form co2 because it will have 2 oh or you can even write carbonic acid hcu3 what about this one it will pause the video here is the answer break this break this acetic acid acetic acid and co2 and remember amino groups behaves as hydroxyl group and ammonia is released okay so if i were to have this tell me what will happen same logic is applied Break this. One one OH left is definitely acetaldehyde. Now here you might wonder what will go. This will protonate this. Sorry, this will protonate NH two because NH two is more basic, and ammonia will be released. That also will become acetaldehyde. What about this one? It will only break this. Okay, so what about glucose? This is glucose. Oh, lot of bonds to break. Break this. Break this. Break this. Break this. Break this. This obviously will have one OH attached, formic acid. This will have two OH more formic acid. Two OH more formic acid. Two OH more formic acid. Too much more formic acid. This will become as a uh, formaldehyde. So it will have five acetic acid and one formaldehyde. What do you think will happen to this one? Now, diketone will break here. But this carbon has an OH. This doesn't. This carbon doesn't have any OH or a C double bond. It is attached to one. So they are not going to break. So it will simply break here and you get this. And so you have a breakage here, you have a breakage here. So if this breaks, this becomes acid. This will become CO2. And this will become aldehyde. The next is called the pinacol pinacolone rearrangement. Now, tertiary 1, 2 diols are called pinacol, meaning this one is called a pinacol. When I treat it with a dehydrating agent, it could be sulfuric acid, it could be P2O5, anything, it becomes pinacolone. Pinacol becoming pinacolone. Now, many of the books would write the reaction as rearrangement, but this is not a rearrangement. It's a proper reaction. A rearrangement will happen only when the Number of the the number of carbon all, all atoms remain the same. So that's not true here. And let's see how it happens. Now you have an alcohol, you have a pinacol, and there's an H plus. Obviously, the OH will take up the H plus and form this. It'll release water. It'll form this. Now there is a methyl shift. Methyl shift because this carbocation is actually more stable due to resonance of the lone pair of O. And that completes the octet. And octet completion is of very much important. It doesn't matter. Even a tertiary can go to secondary, it can go to primary, a six-membered can go to a five-membered, a six can go to seven, anything can happen because this carbocation has octet complete. And then it will release the H plus and form this. Now, if the pair of alkyl groups on the two carbon atoms are different, then on using dilute H2O4, the most stable carbocation is formed and then the product is formed according to KCP. But if in the same situation, concentrated sulfuric acid is used with or without heating, the most stable carb uh, carbonyl compound is formed which is TCP. Now, this is very important to understand. In a pinacol rearrangement, sometimes people wonder, should I look at the stable carbocation first? Or should I look at the stable product first? Now, if it is symmetrical, it doesn't matter. What happens if it is unsymmetrical? You have two R1, R2, here R3, R4. So, should I go for the most stable carbocation? Or, I'll make both of them 
and decide which product is more stable. Well, that's where the KCP and the TCP comes. If I use dilute H two O four and I don't heat it, then dilute H two O four will always give you the more stable carbocation first. So only look for more stable carbocation, irrespective of product KCP, because more stable carbocation will have a lesser uh, transition state energy KCP, lower activation energy. If you use concentrated or you use dilute with heating. Then the more stable product has to form. So you will have to try both and see which product is more stable. And more stable is generally that one where the C double bond O is in resonance, some kind of a conjugation, and that will make the product more stable. Okay, let's see this one. If I want to use dilute H plus, which carbocation do you think is more stable? The right or the left? Obviously, right. Aromat. I mean, it can resonate. So then the CS3 will move to this carbon to give you the octet complete carbocation, and then you will get this product. This is KCP based on more stable carbocation. But if the left one were to form a carbocation, I'll get this. It's not the most stable carbocation, but look at the product. The phenyl will shift, and you will get this. This is TCP. So this is how you make the product. Now, for symmetrical, the KCP and the TCP would be same. So, try these examples again. Remember, keep pausing them. Pause. Now, obviously, the carbocation here is the answer. The the carbocation will form will be any of these. And there will be a methyl shift instead of a phenyl shift, even though phenyl shift is likely because of more migrating aptitude. But the carbocation formed would be more stable if there is a phenyl group there. So there is a methyl migration, and you will get this. Again, pause the video now. So the uh, if it is uh, dilute, then I will always make KCP. So the left side would be more. So a carbocation will form here. Then there will be a hydride shift. Then this will become the C double bond O, and that is what is happening. But if I were to use concentrated in this case, I'll get the left carbocation, uh, the right carbocation, and a phenyl shift. Now it's not always necessary that these TCP and KCP have to be different. They could be same also, but you have to check both. What do you think will happen to this one? Well, carbocation is formed in either of them, but there will be a hydride shift. So I will get only one product. What do you think will happen to this one? Pause. Now let's say the carbocation forms here. This ring will expand to accommodate the carbocation here. Now don't think of dancing resonance because here the octet is getting complete and that is most important. So one ring becomes four-membered. And the other is remains remembered, and there is a plus on the adjacent carbon that is uh, next to the spiro carbon, and this becomes double bond O, something like this. Just check your answer with this. Try here, and wherever is un unsymmetrical, I'll give you both dilute and concentrated. Pause. Well, uh, for dilute, you will have a more stable carbocation, which obviously will form on the four-membered ring. Because not only is that more stable, but also it will show some dancing resonance. But then there will be a ring expansion because the carbocation needs to complete the octet. So you'll have two four-membered rings having one carbon atom common, a spiro, and adjacent atom has a double bond O. I hope you are able to make these. If you think these are going too fast, make sure that you pause the video and slowly and slowly do it. Do it at your own speed. Now suppose I use concentrated here. Well, you'll have to try both. Now the question is: Should you make three into a four-member ring or four into a five-member ring? Now, if you look back at the uh, conformational isomers of cyclic compounds, I listed a table where I had told you about the stabilization energy or the strain energy. 
and from there you will be able to understand that the difference between a 3 and a 4 membered ring strain is not much but the difference between a 4 and a 5 is huge so 5 has only 6.2 approximately of uh, strain energy and i think the 4 membered has something like a 23 point something strain energy so there is a big gap between the 4 and the 5 so the 4 would become 5 rather than the 3 becoming 4 so the carbocation will form in the three membered ring ring expansion will make it make the four member as five membered and then you make the product you will get this tcp try this even zinc chloride is dehydrating in lucas test if you remember it was dehydrating symmetrical doesn't matter four will become five and and one of the fours will remain what about this one? Now more stable carbocation obviously at 5 membered ring and both will become this. What about this one? Thermodynamically also this product is more important rather than 5 becoming 6. 5 and 6 difference is minor 6.2 and 0. 4 is 23 point something and that is going to 6.2. So 4 to 5 is more. So here also you get the same product. So this is what I was talking about. It's not necessary that they have to be always different. So what happens now? P2O5 is also a dehydrating agent. Pause. 5 will become 6. What will happen now? Now the most stable carbocation obviously will form in 6 and the 5 will become 6. What will happen now? Pause. Concentrated. You get a most stable product, 5 will become 6. What do you think will happen now? Again, a dehydrating agent. Well, anywhere it can form, 6 will become 7, even though it's weird, but it will become 7 because octet is getting complete. What do you think will happen here? Now, carbocation will form in one of them. Let's say, the. Uh, in fact, it is easy for me to show it to you on the other side. Let the carbocation form here. Doesn't matter. There's an H here. If there is a hydride migration, I'll get this. But instead of hydride migration, if there is a ring contraction, I'll get this. Now you may wonder, why will I get ring contraction? I mean, when there is an H here and that too, it is forming a six membered ring, it will happen. Well, the reason for this is during carbocation rearrangement, especially in rings, the group that is anti to the leaving group migrates as the rearrangement is a single step process. Say for example, you have this. Can you see the two OH are trans to each other? If one of them becomes a carbocation, there is no other group that can migrate because there is nothing anti. So there will be, and here if you see, and let's check all of them, okay. I've got two axial. Uh, um, the first one is two axial anti. The second is two equatorial anti. And the third is one equatorial, one axial sin. That means on the same side. In the first one, there won't be any reaction. Because if this moves, what is there to come? OH will not migrate. There is no other group. Whereas here, if this OH were to go, this bond is the only one that is opposite to it. The H is not opposite to it. So this will break and shrink. You get this. Whereas if you look at this one, if the OH were to leave, the H can migrate. You will get a 6. Or if this OH were to go, this can migrate. It will again become 5. So you will get a mix of both products here. You will get this as well as this one. If it were this. And if it is not mentioned, well, in that case, I think the best way to is, to is to always make this. But if you are given a multiple option question, multiple answer question, make both. An example is here. What do you think will happen here? If OH leaves, isn't there a H at the other side which is anti to it? What do you think will happen here? 
ring shrink now if i were to give you this well you'll say okay plus happens here then there will be a ring contraction in fact it, there, there won't be any hydride shift here because it will have a dancing resonance as well as octet complete now when you have both good things happening it will convert to this and with concentrated the product is more stable here the, not the carbocation so it will give you this hydride shift so what do you think will happen here pause so the dilute one has to give you more stable carbocation which is outside the ring the carbocation will form here ring will expand six will become seven and if you were to try to make the product it will form this and with concentrated with concentrated the more stable product is required that means the ring must remain six because seven membered ring is less stable and the carbocation will form on the ring methyl will shift and you'll get this now here if you remember um just one sec i want to go back yeah it was not concentrated it was dilute but it was with heat which is why we made the tcp so let's do some more what do you think will happen the oh of 1 if it goes on the other side there is nothing uh, left to move there so it has to ring contract now this is huge take your time pause the video now so in such cases always make the thermodynamically more stable so there is a plus here ring will expand it will become 4 then the plus will come here the ring will expand it will become 4 plus will come here ring will expand it will become 4 then ring will expand it will become 4 then ring will expand it will become 4 the plus comes here then there is a hydride shift the plus goes here and forms a double bond o so you will get this now sometimes reaction can be given as a sequence suppose they give you this i want you to pause the video pause the video now and make the product both kcp and tcp now what the first reaction do it will convert this into a dichloro because addition of chlorine to alkene so you will get this what will happen with moist agoh uh, ag2o it will give you agoh convert them into a pinacol type thing so you already done this so you will get this as kc tcp and add this as kc what do you think will happen here in this sequence pause the video now now ethoxide being a strong base and nitro being a withdrawing group will make this h acidic and this will take an h from here so you will get ch2 negative no2 what will it do with cyclohexanone in cyclohexanone it will attack this carbon as a nucleophile this will go here and you will get eventually uh, cyclohexanone and you will get uh, you add water and you get oh so you are going to get oh ch2 no2 what does lah do no2 to nh2 so you will get oh CH two and H. What will KNO two and HBr do? Convert this into diazonium and OH. So again, you eventually get two OH. And what does Pitvai do? Pinacol, pinacolone. So here, once you make this product, you will get this. And then. you have cyclopentanone mg ether h2o h2o4 so what do you think will happen pause the video here is the solution remember mg ether the two carbons used to combine 
if you look at the preparation of alcohols this was one of the preparation so this is the one that is formed so one five will become six other five will remain as five you'll get this what do you think will happen here pause it will protonate this then this will break carbocation is here then there's a hydride shift and there's a double bond oh. you will get this try this now by default you will make the tcp in fact here the tcp and the kcp will be same pause the video carbocation is formed here five will become six and what do you think will happen here well the carbocation is going to form here then there will be a, a ring contraction the so five will become six so you let me just make it easy for you suppose i break this and i join this here remember this bond is no more so if this happens this becomes plus then this will expand the plus will come here so aren't you getting two six membered with one of them as double bond o it will be this you can check by making the product on your own and that is your uh, pinacol pinacolone rearrangement so the next reaction that we're going to talk about is the haloform reaction a very important reaction and also a test for certain types of uh, compounds now haloform reaction is a chemical reaction where a haloform chx3 and uh, x is halogen is produced by the exhaustive halogenation of a methyl ketone that is a molecule containing the r co ch3 group or a secondary alcohol which may be oxidized to this kind of a compound in the presence of a base now i'll ta talk about the details shortly uh, the r i mean basically you want a compound like this or any compound that can become this okay that gives you a positive haloform reaction where haloform is this now this r could be an h or an alkyl group or an aryl group if you use uh, chloro i mean if you use chlorine you will get chloroform bromine bromoform iodine iodoform so let's uh, check out what the reaction is all about uh, basically we have this uh, ketone and uh, this part is very important in the ketone you must have this and uh, you have uh, a base and i2 now what it will do is it will convert the ch3 part into a halo and the this part is converted to an acid salt so in a way one can say it is type of an oxidation where you are breaking this and uh, so anyway this is the overall reaction but of course there are many different types of compounds which give this so i just want you to first of all look at the mechanism now what happens is first of all iodine reacts with naoh and forms nai naoi and water now remember naoi is a mild oxidizing agent okay it's a mild oxidizing agent so what it does is if you take a secondary alcohol or even a primary alcohol would do because r can be an h also but this part is necessary for an alcohol to have if you take an alcohol like this and then this uh, i2 and naoh have already formed naoi this mild oxidizing agent converts this into an aldehyde or a ketone if r is an h it's an aldehyde if r is an alkyl or aryl group it's a ketone and you get this now basically what also happens is i mean how does this particular reaction happen how does it oxidize well this is how it does that the naoi reacts with water 
to form HOI and NUH. Now this HOI is what reacts with the alcohol. This O takes the H and you get this and the IO minus attacks the carbon and releases water. So you will get this. Now the OH minus it releases water. The OH minus on the other hand will take this proton. This bond will go between carbon and oxygen and I minus is released. So you will get ketone, you will get water and you will get I minus. So this is the initiation of the reaction in the sense that uh, this is how you get an alcohol becoming a ketone. Now, once the ketone is formed, the OH minus, remember we have put NaOH and I2. So the OH minus will take the proton from the alpha carbon because the alpha carbon ion is relatively more stable than a normal carbon ion because of resonance. So this carbon ion is formed. So now it will react with I2 as a nucleophile. It will attack the I and I minus will be released and you will get this. Now what you have to remember is, remember we said this will give the reaction. So will this because in the previous mechanism you just saw how this became this, right? So if this and, and that too by the same reagents, we are just putting uh, I2 and NaOH and this became this. So if this can give this reaction, so can this. By the same logic, if you start with this, I mean, since it is a product formed in between, even this will give the, if you start from here also, it will give the reaction. Because ultimately this is converting to this. Now, having said that, you'll also realize that if this can become this compound, then don't you think even this can become this compound by the same logic, a secondary alcohol becoming a ketone. Only thing is there is already an I in it. So even this compound with NaOI will give you this compound and that iodo compound will further react. So again, now the I has actually made the this second H more acidic because of the inductive pulling. So now again, the OH minus reacts and you get a carbon ion. This will again react with I2. You will get this. Meaning if I start from this compound also, I will give this reaction. And not only that, this alcohol can also be oxidized to this by the same logic. Now the two iodines have made the third H even more acidic. So now the OH minus would react and again take this H. Again, you get a carbon ion. Again, this will react with I2 by the same logic. And eventually you will get this. And remember, I can produce this from this alcohol also. Now, instead of trying to take any alpha H from here, now the OH- is going to act as nucleophile because this carbon has become very much electrophilic because of the O and because of the Ci3. Now the OH- acts as a nucleophile, attacks the carbonyl carbon and the CI3 will leave. Okay. This CI3 is going to leave. Uh, I mean, the, the pi bond first goes to O and then the O minus is going to come back and the CI3 will leave and you will get carboxylic acid as well as this. But can you see this is acidic and this is a carbonine. So this will lose a proton to this and you will get the carboxylate ion followed by iodoform. An iodoform is very important because it's a yellow precipitate. It can be used as a test, which is why we use iodoform as a test. Now, what are the compounds which can give this test? Well, the structural feature essential in the compound to show haloform is that any of the following moieties, moieties means parts, should be present in the molecule attached to some electron withdrawing group or electron donating group by only plus i. Meaning, if I have this, I need this part. Now the H can be replaced by a halogen, no problem. As many halogens, after all, it's going to give a haloform. You can start with a methyl ketone. You, or you can start with a alpha haloketone or a dihaloketone or a trihaloketone. All of them will give. 
or perhaps even those groups which can be converted to these in the presence of NaOH or I2. So if there is anything that can convert this into, I mean, any compound to these, even that will give, but the reagent has to be the same. Now carboxylic acids and the derivatives will not give this test as there is a lone pair conjugation with the double bond O. Now this reaction can be used as a test for the type of alcohol or aldehyde or ketone that give this particular reaction by the formation of a yellow precipitate of iodoform. Now what are the reagents they can give you? They can give you some sometimes like bleaching powder because after all, what is bleaching powder? Ca2 plus Cl minus and OCl minus and ultimately you need a Cl minus and a OCl minus only. You can have NaOH or KOH followed by halogen or you can simply use NaOX or KOX. They will also give this reaction. Now I'm going to give you a couple of compounds. I want you to note down these compounds and I want you to tell me what would be, which of them would give the reaction, which of them won't. So which of the following compounds show positive iodoform test? So first of all, let me list the compounds. These are the compounds. And you can pause the video at the end of this slide. So these are the compounds. You can pause the video when, let us say I reach 21. So now you can pause the video, note down all the product, uh, all the compounds. And there are some more. Once you have done that, then play the video back. So now I'm going to next slide before showing you which of them give, which of them don't. Let me show you all the molecules first. So in the next set, you have uh, these molecules. And that's it. So now I want you, you to pause the video and make all of these compounds. Work on each of the compounds. Get the answer and only then play the video back. I'm going to go back to the previous slide to give you the answers. So here are the answers. Now the first one, if you see, there is a carbon which has an OH and it has an H. The basic requirement is to have a carbon with a H, OH and a CH3, which ethanol does have. So first one will give. Second one again contains an H, a CH3 and an OH. This does not matter. As long as it's an alkyl or aryl group. So this will give. As you can see, in this, you have the carbon with an H, OH and ME. So this will give. But in the next one, can you see this carbon doesn't have an H? Therefore, a tertiary alcohol can never give this reaction. If you look at the next one, again the carbon contains an H, CH3 and OH, it will give. Now here, there is already a Cl, but it doesn't matter, you can have a halogen here. Now, this compound can give you haloform reaction, but not iodoform test. Iodoform requires this to be an I, because it is CHI3 that you need to get. What this compound will go give, is that the OH minus will pick up either of these H, convert them into I and you will get CHI2Cl. This is not iodoform. So it will give you a haloform. If, if, if this were replaced by haloform reaction, then this would give the test. But iodoform test cannot be given. Now, again, you can also have uh, anything with this, right? Any aldehyde or ketone with this. So this will give. And since now you have iodine, it does not matter. Iodine can be there. This will give. This will again give because this part is there. This will give because this part is there. This part is there, so even this will give. This part is there, so this will give. Now in the next one, 
remember it is a bromo and since you are putting NaOH this OH minus will attack this carbon remove this nucleophilic substitution can you see this basically becomes this MeCH MeOH so if this can give so can this in the next one both the bromines can be removed by OH and it will become acetone and acetone does give the reaction if you look at number 9 so this will give again the Cl will become OH it will give now this cannot give because it will give haloform again because it's already CCL3 now the OH minus is simply going to attack as a nucleophile you will get chloroform in this you won't get iodoform so again remember if it were given haloform reaction then it is fine but if it says iodoform test this won't the next one again can't give because this, it has got a Ci2 pH. You need three I's here. So this won't. No carboxylic acid or any derivative nor the ester and nor will this give. But if you see in 21 I'm saying after prolonged heating. Now what this basically means is esters on prolonged heating with a base will convert into uh, the carboxylate ion and alcohol. So you will get ETOH, you will get MeCO minus. This is the hydrolysis of an ester. Can you see ethanol gives? Number one, this means if you were to do prolonged heating, then the OAT will become ETOH and that would give the reaction, therefore it will give after prolonged heating. Now let's look at the next slide. In the next slide, the first one, what happens? The alpha carbon that will lose the H will be this one, right? What do you get? You will get Me, Co, Ci2, Co, Me. Now the OH minus will come, attack the C and this will leave. So you will get Me, Co, Ci2 minus and then it will take the proton from this acid and it will become this. Can you see this gives? Therefore, this will give. Again, acid won't give. OME won't give. OAT won't give. But OAT on after prolonged heating will give. Acid chloride won't give. This won't give. Because again, it's a ester. But the other ester after prolonged heating, it will give you isopropyl alcohol. That will give. The 30 won't give. Again, it's an anhydride. 31. In 31, what happens is, these two become I. Now what will the OH minus do? It will attack this. This will leave. So won't you get Ci2 minus double bond O and you will get a double bond OH. So this H will go here. Can you see this part will give? So 31 will give. 32 will definitely give. 33 will not give because you need uh, you, you can't have a nitro group there. This cannot give. It doesn't have an ME. 35 also is an acid won't give. But if you were to do prolonged heating, though I have not given you that. If I were to give this after prolonged heating, remember this is a beta keto acid. On prolonged heating in a beta keto acid, it will do decarboxylation. Which means you will get acetophenone. And this will give the reaction. So if the same were to be given after prolonged heating, it will give. So that ends the haloform reaction. And now let's quickly go for the test of alcohols. First is the sodium metal test. We've already done this. So this will confirm the presence of a, an acidic H, however weak it may be. You will get effervescence of H2 gas. Then there is a seric ammonium nitrate test. This is a very important test. It will confirm the presence of an alcohol. Alcohol react, will react with seric ammonium nitrate to give you a complex. You don't have to remember the reaction as such. Just the fact that the yellow colored seric ammonium nitrate will become a red colored compound complex. And if this color were not red, if it was blue or blue black, it will, it will be phenol. But remember, not all alcohols give this. Generally, alcohols up to 6 carbon give this test. 
then comes solubility test now alcohols are soluble in are actually not soluble in water except for the first three and tertiary butanol so most of the alcohols are insoluble in water so that is one they are insoluble even in naoh and the fact that they are insoluble in naoh implies very clearly that they cannot be soluble in water because naoh is lot basic than water and if that cannot take the acidic edge from alcohol and make it soluble water definitely cannot on the other hand phenols which are more acidic than alcohols but not sufficiently acidic to be soluble in water will be soluble in naoh so there is a distinction between phenol and alcohol here so alcohols except methanol and ethanol are not soluble in water and naoh whereas phenols are soluble are not soluble in water but soluble in naoh then you have the dichromate test and here we are going to talk about distinction between various alcohols so now we have confirmed that they are alcohols we will say primary secondary or tertiary first is a dichromate test now primary alcohols we already know how they oxidize and uh, the cr6 plus is orange we know it gives you acid and cr3 plus cr3 plus is green we know so orange turning to green could be a primary alcohol even a secondary alcohol will give this because it will form a ketone green and then a tertiary alcohol won't react at all so now you'll say what happens if orange to green is there well it's not confirmed so you have to test for the presence of an acid you won't be able to test for the presence of a ketone you'll be able to test in fact okay you can do it for a ketone there are uh, specific tests for ketone versus acid not ketone versus aldehyde because aldehydes have positive tests ketones don't so uh, there is a 2 for dnp test that can be done for ketone then comes lucas test which we have already done the primary alcohol will give you turbidity after 15 minutes secondary will give you within 5 minutes and tertiary will give you turbidity under a minute then comes the last of the test that's called the victor mayer test so now let's imagine i have three, three test tubes one containing a primary alcohol other secondary alcohol another third tertiary alcohol and we don't know which test tube contains which one so we are going to add the same set of reagents to all the three and there will be a difference in what you get so i am adding red phosphorus on i2 in each what do you think it will get remember red phosphorus on i2 forms pi3 and that pi3 will remove the oh and convert that into i and that will happen in each case now i reacted with agno2 all of, all the three now you know that we have done agno2 and kno2 in nucleophilic substitution kno2 gives ono ono and agno2 gives you no2 so you will get no2 here you will get no2 here and you will get no2 here now comes the difference if you add hno2 to each the first two will react and how will they react if you have rch2no2 you can write hno2 like this these two will form water and the carbon will join with the nitrogen with a double bond meaning you will get this whereas in this case what will happen is you can write hno2 like this also so this oh and this h will form water carbon will join with nitrogen by a single bond now this is called nitrolic acid it is blue this is pseudo nitrol it is also blue whereas there will be no color here nothing is formed here because there is no h on this carbon so hno2 won't react but so far you don't know in two test tubes you got blue in one you didn't the one in which you didn't it's a tertiary alcohol Now, out of the two blues, if I were to add any OH in both, in the first I'll get this, which is a red color. That is because this has an acidic edge. Can you see it doesn't have an any acidic edge here? So any OH simply will not react. So this will also be colorless. This will also be colorless. So blue, adding any OH, nothing will happen. It will remain blue. this was already identified 
बट ब्लू टर्निंग टू रेड ऑन एडिंग एन एच कन्फर्म्स प्राइमरी एल्कोहल एंड दैट इज द एंड ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो एज यू नोटिस इज अ प्रिटी लॉन्ग वीडियो मोर देन एन आर एंड हाफ आई गेस एंड इट विल टेक लॉर्ड ऑफ पेशेंस एंड टाइम टू गो थ्रू दिस अटमोस्ट यू कैन वॉच इट इन टू सेटिंग्स बट अगेन डोंट टेक टू मेनी ब्रेक्स इन बिटवीन वॉचिंग सच अ वीडियो बिकॉज इट टेक्स लॉर्ड ऑफ टाइम यू नीड टू स्पेंड लॉर्ड ऑफ टाइम लॉर्ड ऑफ एग्जाम्पल्स आर डिट क्वेट फास्ट बिकॉज दिस इज अ वीडियो आई मीन यू नीड टू स्पेंड लॉर्ड ऑफ टाइम सो प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दैट अ वीडियो इज एन एड इट इज बेटर दैन अ बुक बिकॉज अ बुक इज not something that you can really uh, uh, understand much other than the language here in a video there are a lot of things that you can understand much better than a book but if you don't work this will be totally useless so even a physical class an offline class that you take is useful only when you work on it so make sure that every video that you watch you have must have done the previous video thoroughly you have you remember all the reactions you remember all the properties because all of them will be connected to the next video so with that we come to the conclusion and alcohols is over now the next video that we'll talk about will be in ethers so with that thanks for watching this have a nice day